So we have some interesting news here from the uh, Abacus Data team, where they uh, recently conducted a study. Uh, it was actually done August 7th. Uh, sorry, I'm a, bit, a little bit late to that. But looks like we have a, a, some interesting results here in the committed vote intention by province slash region. So uh, BC, we'll start off with them, 42% conservative, 26% NDP. So the NDP is taking a pretty big hit. Um, not just here in Ontario, but it looks like in BC too. And of course, the Liberals are in third place with 17, but a big win there for the Conservatives. Uh, Alberta, not surprising, 62% to 17 for the, for the Liberals and 13 for the NDP. <clears throat> uh, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, 51%. That's not surprising. They're very conservative areas. Uh, Ontario, look at, the, look at the hit the Liberals have taken. 26%, still too many, but 44% for the... Uh, for the Conservatives and 20% for the NDP, of course. But hey, if the, left, if the left wants to split their vote, they can. Wouldn't make a difference. A lot of people think that, well, if the if they just team up like they did in France, they can stop Pierre Polyev. They can't. It's not about popular vote. It's about how many seats you're going to win, how many ridings you're going to win. Even if the Liberals and the NDP teamed up, they would still only get, what, just over 100 seats? It's not going to do anything. Um, here's the shocking one, though. Quebec. 31% for the Conservatives and only 30 for the Bloc. I know that's very close, but the Bloc or Liberals almost always lead in Quebec. And now Pierre Polyev's Conservatives are. Considering that people in Montreal don't seem to like him very much, this is very shocking, but also really good news. Uh, if you're supporting the Conservatives and 24% for the Liberal. And Atlantic Canada, and I just, I'll never understand Atlantic Canada, but I don't live there, so I guess I don't need to. Um... I do have family out there, so and they're they're actually conservative, so I'm not uh, not exactly sure what's going on. I'll have to have a conversation with with some of them, maybe. Um, but yeah, thirty four percent for the liberals. The conservatives are still winning, but it's just the liberals do the best in Atlantic Canada, and um, that will confuse me for the rest of time. Like I don't really have uh, too much else to say about that, but it is crazy what's happened in Quebec there, and they actually kind of do a little. A uh, little poll here, committed vote intention by Quebec versus rest of Canada. So Quebec is still not very conservative, although they do have the bloc. But the rest of Canada, I mean, liberals are averaging 22%. Conservatives, 47%. That is more than enough for a majority. Even at that point, you, even if the liberals and NDP teamed up, they wouldn't even win the popular vote, let alone the seats or the ridings. So, I mean, it's just... Um, you know, that's what happens, though, when you when you get someone like Justin Trudeau in to destroy a country and destroy people's hopes. And, you know, you're going to destroy your own party in the process of it. So, hey, if you guys want to keep them in there and let them go into the next next election with uh, these numbers. And let's be honest, they'll be getting even worse either as we come into January of 2025 and beyond. Trust me, they will get worse with the with the uh, another tax increase in April, I believe. And then you have the interest rates going up in January. So a lot of people are going to be really, really stressed out financially, even more so than they already are. So here we have the federal vote intention by age. So 18 to 29, 35% conservative. Now, again, if you combine the liberals and the NDP, they win. So the young people are splitting their vote too. Great. That being said, NDP supporters aren't just going to go over to the liberals anymore. It used to be like those two parties were kind of the same. And if we want to beat the conservatives, just don't vote for the NDP or vote liberal. Too many people on the side of the NDP hate Trudeau now. And they also aren't very happy with Jugmeet Singh, who's kind of keeping him in power. They don't even want the coalition, a lot of them. Um, yeah, if you want to check out more on that too, uh, Ryan from Northern Perspective breaks that down very, very well. Him and his wife, Tanya, do a very good job. So if you haven't checked them out, if you're not subscribed to their channel, definitely go over and have a look. Um, I'm not a, a journalist. I don't pretend to be one. I'm certainly not an investigative journalist, but they are. They do great work. I'm just a commentary. I'm here more just for, you know, being thought provoking, sharing my opinion and engaging with people. Um, but I'm certainly not a journalist. So if you're looking for real journalism, definitely go and give them a uh, give them a give their channel a look and check out some of their videos. They're excellent. So we have 30 to 20, sorry, 30 to 44, 43% conservative, 23% liberal, 21% NDP, 45 to 59, 51% conservative. So Gen X is going conservative. And then 60 and over, which is actually where the liberals do their best, 
again, the people with the most life experience are voting for the worst politicians. I don't understand. I mean, they have still have 42%. The conservatives rather still have 42% of their support, but 26% for the liberal, like how, how is every other age group smarter than you? I don't, I don't understand. <clears throat> Anyway, it's yeah, some of the, like some of the like I know the liberals the liberal numbers aren't good and they're certainly not anywhere close to winning the next election, but it still just ponders me, you know, like how how do you still have 26% of any age group? Where you have about 23% on average here of people generally speaking who support liberals. How? If you're liberal and you watch this, tell me what the appeal is to Justin Trudeau. I mean, just just tell me what it is. Do you like crime? You like mass immigration? Do you not like being able to buy a house? Like, I don't know. You tell me. And the last thing I want to go over here is the federal vote intention by gender. So 44% male, 26, sorry, 44% for the conservatives for the males and 26% for the liberals, 15% NDP. That's not too shocking. That's kind of how it always is or around there. Female, where Justin Trudeau does the best, 21%. Females are more likely, they're more likely to go over to the NDP, as you see here, where they're at 22%, but even, even f Canadian females, some of the most socially liberal people you'll ever meet, generally speaking, especially out here in Ontario, lots of socially liberal women out here, and even they are getting, even they're kind of sick and tired of what's going on with the Liberal Party. Some have went to the NDP, like I said, but a lot of them are going to the Conservatives. I mean, Pierre Polyev is winning in every age group, each gender, and in every province. I've asked you guys this before, and you know, I wanted your guys' opinion, and I'll ask it again now. Do you still think, or do you think now, if your opinion was different before, has this changed your opinion into believing that Pierre Polyev can get 250 seats? I think that's a bit much. I don't know if he'll get, like, that is a, a lot of seats, but I think for sure he's going to get 225. Now, again, we don't really know how far we are away from an election. Jagmeet Singh gets his pension in January. Interest rates going up, taxes going up. Jagmeet Singh finally might say, okay, I got my pension. There's so much pressure amongst my supporters to end the coalition. Let's end it. Let's have an election. So we could see one early next year, but it's also possible we got to wait till October. Even if we have to wait till October, yes, I know that gives the Liberals, you know, just over a year to kind of, you know, get it together. They're just, they've just done so much damage. They can't possibly undo all of it in just a year. They're done. Unless, you know, again, and are the Liberals going to play dirty? Maybe. Like, maybe they'll just make up a scandal. They make up a lot of things about Pierre Polyev. Right? I mean, they just do. They just make it up, and some of their supporters believe it, which is unfortunate. But, um, you know... I'd love to hear uh, what you guys think about that too, all this comparison to Pierre Polyev and American politics and then Trudeau and his liberals, maybe not Trudeau himself, but the liberal party has certainly embraced this Kamala Harris calling conservatives weird, which is literally embracing American style politics. So when the liberals criticize the other party for doing something, it's not because the other party's doing it, it's because the liberals are doing it. And they want to deflect because they don't want to take responsibility or accountability. Everything is either Pierre Polyev's fault somehow, or it's Stephen Harper did this to us and, well, we can't overcome it. Please. That was nine years ago. You've had nine years and you've made every single political mistake you can make, including committing treason multiple times. But like I said, if the liberals want to keep that guy as their leader, they can go right ahead and do that and they can go down with them doesn't matter to me but again i do want to hear your opinion what do you think especially if you're female like what what has specifically done it for you was it the treason is it the crime is it you know all the things combined you just can't take it anymore or is pierre polyev just making more sense to you like what is it i, I am just curious and um yeah let me let me know what you think are you surprised about the quebec uh the, the quebec poll because i'm pretty surprised about that i never thought pierre polyev would be leading at any time in quebec but he is so yeah, let me know what you think about any of this uh, stuff, guys. I really enjoy uh, listening to your, sorry, reading your comments, and I, I try to respond to them as quickly as possible. If I do miss some, I do apologize. Sometimes there is quite a few of them. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think, and um, that's going to be it for this video. So don't forget to like and subscribe. 
I really, really, really appreciate everybody who does like my videos and subscribes to the channel because it really helps me grow. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll be back shortly with another video.